Okay, so our next presenter is a PhD student at Monash University who uh, presented at the first Open Programming Languages MiniConf back in Wellington 2010. Uh, he's going to uh, give us a talk about finding vulnerabilities in PHP code via static code analysis. Please make uh, Peter welcome. Thanks, Chris. Um, this actually ties freakishly good into the start of Adam's talk before to do with um, add slashes and stuff like that. So what I'm going to begin with is a quick crash course in the type of vulnerabilities that we're talking about here. Um, and most of the ones that I'm going to be targeting are unsanitized user input. Um, so a quick quiz, you can answer this one in your head if you want, um, but if you're looking at a piece of code like this, what's going to happen next when we have the user input going straight into a MySQL query? Um, I'm sure you all guess the correct answer is a, a Balrog comes and destroys your program. Um, it's a little extreme, uh, but I didn't think about it, you guys did. So what happens is we have this input. Um, uh, this is like I said, so simple at Adam's talk, I sort of felt a little disappointed sitting there <laughs> watching my talk yet. Uh, done for me. Um, you get your input, uh, and the query turns from a nice query that says, uh, please give me a valid user with this username, to please give me this user or any other user, and don't worry about that valid bit anymore because it's not so important because we've commented out the rest of the query. Um, I don't know, I'm sure everyone's familiar with this one. Um, this is similar to the query that Adam had. If you have a uh, MySQL multi-query inside your code, then you can actually add multiple queries and drop database statements and a whole bunch of other funky queries in there as well. So hopefully um, no one has anything like that inside their code. Um, okay, so it's pretty obvious. You, know, you, you, you sanitize your input before you put it inside the database. Uh, but there are some other cases. So this is, again, kind of like a poor man's register globals. I actually found this in a, a piece of uh, open source code that I was looking at while I was um, re uh, researching this talk. And someone's just taken all of the variables and dynamically created variables based on them. Um, maybe they've never heard of register globals or extract or anything like that. But you have the same problem. The thing is, it's, it's not quite as obvious. When you actually look at the code, um, OK, I might be reviewing this code, and I might see a username variable down the bottom inside the MySQL query. And sure, it makes you scratch my head and think, shouldn't there be a MySQL real escape string or something there? Um, but perhaps, you know, I'll just trust that someone declared it properly up there and they've, and they've constructed this variable correctly. Um, but if it's uninitialized, then any input, if someone passes in the username input, it can go straight into the query again. And a Balrog will come and destroy your program again. So again, the easy answer is don't do it. You know, um, why don't you use PDO or why don't you use some sort of database abstraction layer? Um, it's, it's not just databases that we're worrying about here, you know, cross-site scripting uh, vulnerabilities. Um, one of the issues I came across and the reason I got interested in this talk in the first place was because of this type of vulnerability where someone was actually executing shell commands on our server. Um, I'm sure Dave up there can remember this very well. Um, if I could have a double Balrog here, I would, because it's even worse than a database one. If someone sends a query like this along, all of a sudden they're executing commands on your server. Um, the only upside is they're dub dub dub, uh, dub dub data user on our servers, but uh, they can still you know, flood a router and bring down a network quite easily, or if your firewall isn't configured properly, they can start accessing anything that the web user can access, like the database, and perhaps sending that outside the network as well. Um, well, that's someone inside our network stealing our data. Uh, so, so I was sitting there and I thought, gee, someone's actually executing code on my machine over here. Luckily it was just a development machine. Um, I think someone's executing code, what do I do? I need to find out where this vulnerability is. So I fired up grep you know, and I thought, okay, I'll just search for all of Shell executing our code. Um, and the dash B10 up the top means, just give me 10 lines of context when you find a line that matches. So I can see here, you can have a rough sort of idea that, oh, okay, there's a command that's getting executed and there's a name variable there and it's not escaped using escape shell args. Um, the thing is, I don't actually know. Maybe it was escaped. Maybe it was escaped 11 lines up. Um, maybe it was escaped 12 lines up. And also, we have, you know, it might be a million lines of code or something like that. And you end up with this big pile of rubbish that you have to sort through. And I don't like sorting through code like that. Um, it's even worse when you go to have a look at all the different ways that PHP can execute uh, functions on the shell. So instead of just getting a big pile of rubbish, you actually get this huge pile of rubbish. And I really, really don't like, I like the metaphor of this because it's like going through old code and old code smells like rubbish smells. I don't like looking at it and I don't want to have to look at it. So I was thinking, how do I go about detecting vulnerabilities in code? Um, I asked myself, how do you do this? And myself found out the answer with a famous web search engine. Needless to say, I didn't have to read 10,300,000 pages to see that this is a sort of a viable solution to try and find out any vulnerabilities in your code. Um, 
Static code analysis is something you've probably come across before if you've used an optimizing compiler or even some sort of text editor that does syntax highlighting. It's looking at your code without executing your code and trying to find out what different parts of it mean. So in order to highlight code properly in an editor, you need to know what's a variable and what's not a variable. Um, first step is lexical analysis. So taking your source code, your, your plain text source files, breaking them into tokens. PHP has a function to do this, PHP get tokens. I'm not sure if it uses the same um, thing that the Zend engine uses to actually, okay, there we go, so it uses the same way that the Zend actually passes your code, and it gives you all little tokens inside the code. Once you have these tokens, you need to semantically analyze them, find out what the meaning of each, code, uh, each token is. So here, if we were to get the tokens for this code, we're gonna have at least two different tokens, both called print, but they have completely different meanings. So the first one is a command, the second one is um, a parameter to that command over there. So now that we have semantically analyzed all these tokens and we have a sort of abstract syntax tree and we know, uh, of the code and we know what the code's gonna do, um, we wanna analyze all the different ways that the control can uh, flow through this program. So this really only has one way that we can flow through this program. We're gonna go down, we're gonna call the first call method, that will in turn call the second call method. So there's one possible way that we can flow through this program here. Um, Real programs have lots of different ways you can flow through them with if statements and things like that. Um, once we have all these different control flows, we can actually follow data through these control flows and use taint analysis to find out is the data tainted or not by the time it gets to something sort of vulnerable. So here we call the first call method. Um, that one's completely safe because it actually goes through and before it gets to the second call where it executes a shell, ex uh, shell execute, it has been escaped at a previous point. So we can analyze this without actually running the code. We can tell that that first call is actually safe. Um, we can also tell that the second one is not safe because the user input goes directly to an execute function without being um, escaped or without being sanitized in some meaningful way. So what we end up is instead of a big pile of rubbish, we have this one little thing that we, okay, we found all the executes, we've gotten rid of all the ones we don't care about, and we found the one that matters. And not only have we found the one that matters, but we found out exactly where it is. Like you can find out details about um, uh, how to fix it, what the problem with it is, um, and, and a whole bunch of things like that. Also how to exploit it as well. And PHP is obviously an interesting language to, use uh, to statically analyze because it's a dynamic language. So you have a whole bunch of cool things like dynamic includes and the eval construct. Um, uh, this guy here is a, um, is a PhD, not a PhD, I think he's just a security researcher in Germany who's been working on this uh, project, which is a, written in PHP to scan PHP code and look for vulnerabilities. Um, I thought it was kind of dying, but it was a new release a couple of weeks ago where he added a whole bunch of cool features, so that was quite nice to see. Um, so I'm just going to run through a couple of different examples of what this piece of software does, and at the end we'll have a look at what it doesn't yet do, and hopefully what it can do in the future. So, first example I want to give is just this one here. So we'll have a look at what um, a, a static code analyzer will actually give us when we say, can you please analyze this code for us here? So let's pop up here. Okay, so we scan our file. Um, and we have one vulnerability, because of course there's only one line of code. That one line of code is user input going directly into a shell execute function. Um, it gives us a whole bunch of cool information, so it gives us the um, source of the file here, and if it was a longer source one, it will highlight all the lines that it found that are problematic, and we'll have a look at an example of that later. Um, it also gives us information on why this particular vulnerability is bad, so a little description, this one's pretty obvious, you know, if you get input going into a shell execute, you're gonna have a few problems. Um, but of course, there's a whole bunch of other types of uh, vulnerabilities as well. I'm not sure if we can read this or not, but uh, so apart from SQL injection, you can have file manipulation, client-side ones like cross-site scripting, um, and so on. So it'll look for all of these sort of vulnerabilities. So what I would like to do is bring up a slightly more complex example where we have, kind of like what we're analyzing before, um, user input goes into the first-hand variable, first-hand variable gets concatenated with some other strings, goes into the intermittent function, which gets concatenated into more strings, which then goes into a vulnerable function, which then executes that command. So this is what you can, you can sort of, uh, if we were visually analyzing this, we can do our own taint analysis and see that that user input never gets um, sanitized before it gets to the shell execute. But if it was a much bigger program, you don't want to have to manually do that. And in fact, it might become really hard to do that. So let's go and have a look. Again, what's gonna happen here? It's quite quick on these very small files. We found the one vulnerability, um, and it's exactly what I was just saying. So we have our user input. User input goes into this variable. This variable goes into this variable, which calls this function. Um, this function then modifies the variable in some way, but doesn't 
uh, escape it, doesn't sanitize it, calls this function, which then calls a shell execute. It's split it up into three different sections for us because there may be a whole bunch of different um, pieces of code which call um, this intermittent function down here and it can group them all together so you start getting um, some sort of meaningful analysis of what's actually going on. Um, so I'll just uh, go have a look at some other examples here now. Um, what I did was I just went to Fresh Meat, which apparently has been renamed to Free Code sometime since I've been there last time. It's just a repository of uh, open source software sort of updates and statuses. Um, and I just said, give me all the PHP software and order it by popularity. And I started downloading frameworks and uh, web applications. Um, yeah, so uh, I apologize if anyone's code actually appears in here. Um, the first few ones didn't work. So this program is sort of a research tool. Um, so it doesn't work on really big code bases. So you know the first few were WordPress uh, and a bunch of other th things like that, which are just far too big for this to handle. Because it's running as an Apache child process in the browser, has certain limitations, memory limitations, execution time, and so on. Um, I don't actually remember what one this was, but it was somewhere in the top 10. We have a, you can see here, it actually took 300 seconds to run this. That's why I'm not trying to do it as a live demo. It took five minutes. It's especially weird because my Apache timeout was 300 seconds, so I don't know how it got that long. Um, you can see it found 207 different vulnerabilities. Some are correct, some are not correct. Um, some of the notable things here are the include success. So out of 131 include statements that it found, it could only successfully resolve 106 of them because some, perhaps some were dynamically generated at runtime or something like that. Um, sensitive sinks down here. Um, sensitive sinks is just a term in the software for functions that you don't want user input to get to because they could do something bad on your server. A um, little bit of info about what type of software it's using. So you can see here, very first off the block, we have a, a file disclosure vulnerability. We have some input coming from the post array, um, going inside the location variable, which therefore is the first parameter into read recursive. Read recursive, the first parameter goes directly into an open directory. So um, this user input goes straight into an open directory via a couple of other methods, and it's managed to pin down where it happens. Um, I'm not actually sure what this little icon here is, but it has a little exploit creator as well, which I can't click here because it's a saved HTML file. But it will generate some curl code that you can then execute um, in PHP that will try and actually run this exploit and see if it does in fact work. Um, again, I'm not sure what software this is, but you can see there's a few, excuse me, a few little vulnerabilities that it's found. Um, some are more complex than others. Um, so uh, that's quite a long one, and to be honest, I'm not even 100% sure how correct it is. And I, when I sat down and tried to actually understand what this was trying to tell me, I didn't really understand it, so maybe a little bit more work um, in the user interface would be nice. Um, but because there's so many of these things coming up, a, a lot of them are actually um, a, a false positive. So here's one of the examples where we have uh, user input goes into an S file name, um, S file name goes into an unlink via a whole bunch of other things. But clearly there's a function here that says sanitize file name. Now that's not a standard PHP function, that's something they've written. Um, is that connected? Or? Cool. Um, so I mean, it's not a standard PHP function, it's something they've written. But any common sense look at this would say, hey, that probably sanitizes file name. So we probably don't have to worry about this as a vulnerability. Um, and also here where they have uh, the file directory is sort of constructed because from a survey ID which comes somewhere from a global variable. But that also has a sanitize in function. So what we do is we can actually configure this software. What we're trying to do is we're trying to you know, get rid of all the false positives and still focus on what we want. So we have these custom securing functions that we can define. Um, this one over here is saying, OK, we know that for those, um, so there's all these different types of vulnerabilities, right? So for file disclosure vulnerabilities, sensitive syncs might be fopen or fgetS or something like that. If any user input gets there, it's bad. But if the user input passes through this function first, then don't worry about it. Um, the same thing happens for if you could have the most evilly constructed input string ever that's going to completely destroy your software. But if you cast it into an int, you're pretty much guaranteed that it's not going to do anything wrong. Um, so the same thing happens with sanitize int up here. They've written, I don't know why they've written a sanitize int function. They probably could have just cast it into an int. But some of the defaults, you know, MD5, if you take, again, another any string and do an MD5, you're not going to have you know, backsla uh, backslashes and quotes and stuff in there that are trying to um, run arbitrary code. Some of the limitations of this particular piece of software which I'm using, uh, one of the biggest ones and why I can't actually use it on our software at work yet is it doesn't support OOP. Um, but that will be done, in his, he's looking at that is in his sort of roadmap of what he would like to do. I think he's rewriting his parser to make sure that uh, it's more uh, achievable. Um, obviously can't successfully resolve all includes and there's other things like the eval statements that I was talking about before. Um, 
browser-based, so it can't necessarily work with continuous integration builds right now, but there's a bunch of people who have posted on his blog saying, hey, here's a command line interface I've written, and so eventually that will probably be sitting there. Um, and slow to scan, so 300 seconds, that was, uh, I don't know, that wasn't a, a huge, huge piece of software. Um, but my understanding from reading is that all uh, these sort of static code analysis, it's just a slow process. It's an expensive process to run over this analyzed code and actually try and identify all the vulnerabilities. Um, what I'd like to see is like a plugin for a PHP compiler. So there was a talk about Facebook's hip hop compiler um, at OSDC. Um, I don't think that has a plugin architecture, but PHC is PHP compiler, which is, I don't think it's supported anymore, but it has a very good plugin architecture. Um, and it gives you the the results of its analysis and then lets you do your own analysis on top of that. So they don't currently do this sort of vulnerability detection, but it's very easy to then plug in your own code to do that. Um, and of course, written in C++, a little bit faster, a little bit more um, performance there. Um, and because these compilers already have optimization routines, they've already done certain uh, analysis that would be very useful for this same type of thing. Um, so that's the end of my brief talk. Uh, thank you. Right, any questions for Peter? Cheers, Peter. So um, do you have any other scanning tools you might recommend? Um, I haven't come across any particular ones for PHP that focus on security vulnerabilities. There are a lot to do with um, code metrics, like cyclometric complexity and stuff like that. So right, yeah. I think there's some plugins for, con uh, for Jira or some of those tools, um, but yeah, and not any that focus on this sort of thing. There was one called Pixie, which was a research project a little while ago. Um, I haven't been able to get a download of that even from the Internet Archive. I couldn't get a working copy of it, so um, yeah, not, not right now. Cheers. Do you, think yeah. right. Do you think this is something that could also be done at runtime? So when you go to your internet tutorial and they give you some poorly authored code, your PHP gives you the warning? I think there is some extensions for PHP that, are, that do taint analysis of data. So for instance, um, inside the data structure, I'm not sure too much about the internals of PHP, but the data structures which hold the variables, um, they'll have different flags that are attached to it that say, this is tainted for cross-site scripting, this is tainted for database, this is tainted for something else, or this has been sanitized as well. So I think there are some extensions which provide that sort of level of interaction, which is quite cool. Um, I haven't researched them too much, I just sort of briefly touched upon them, but I don't see why you wouldn't, that wouldn't be implementable, definitely. So. Um, I think the the analysis you did of the projects from Freshmeet was quite interesting, and I'm just wondering if you contacted those projects because I think I use one. Of them. Yeah, <laughs> recognise the name. Um, I, I was sitting there thinking when I go through these, I may as well send an email off to them, or if they got a bug, something like that. So, um, I think that's a worthwhile thing for me to do. Yes. <laughs> Anybody else? No, I'm sure you'll agree with me that that was quite uh, enlightening. Um, thanks, Peter. Cheers.